Welcome to video 14 in series 3 and in this video I'll show you how to access scripts from other scripts and I'll use the walkthrough wall script as an example. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the my trigger so when the player walk, walks into it the trigger example script will, will have a reference to the wall to begin with. It will access the component walkthrough wall run a method that will change the layer of the wall. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that. I need to change both scripts, wall, the walkthrough wall, and the trigger example script. Uh, so I'll start with the walkthrough wall script to begin with. Currently I have the on enable, on disable methods. I won't be using them now. Now I'll have my own public methods. So I'll say public void, public so that the method is accessible from another script, so that's important. Uh, public void uh, set layer to not solid, okay. And I'll make another method. Public void set layer to default. All right, and then I'll just copy these. Then I'll just comment all this out. All right, so that script is ready. Walk through wall. Now, of course, I won't do anything. These functions are not run. I need to call them in order for these instructions to happen. So I'll go back to my trigger example script, uh, which I have open, and I'll comment this out because I won't be doing it that way anymore. In fact, in order to access the script, which is on the wall game object, this walkthrough wall, I must have a reference to it first. I could do that by writing public game object uh, something, for example, and then slotting it in in the inspector, and then accessing the walkthrough wall component, and then running the method. That's one way to do it, but I'm just going to do it as a private. I'll actually search for the game object uh, when the game starts. And so I'll just call this, well, in fact, I will hold a reference directly to the script. So walk through wall scripts. That's what I'll call it. I'll have a new method here. Avoid set initial references. And then I'll access the game object. I will actually, well, sorry, I'll store a reference to it. I'll find the game object, store a reference to the walkthrough wall script component that's on that game object. So here's how you do it. There's a game object dot find. I know it's called wall. Then I'll say get component walk through wall. That's how you do it. Now, there's a fair chance I may change the name of the game object, or I may uh, remove the component walkthrough wall. Well, I'll, I'll first work towards the uh, uh, the first possible failure, which is if, so I'll try and counteract that, if game object find wall is uh, not equal to null, then I'll carry out these instructions. Okay, and I could do another check if I wanted to. Uh, does it have that component? But I won't bother. I'll leave it there. Uh, then I'll add in back the start function. So this is the default unity method here. And I'll set my initial references. Okay, now it's time to access that other script. So I've got a uh, reference to it now. So I've, I'll establish a reference when uh, I start the game. This will get called. It'll st store a reference to the walkthrough wall component on the wall. Uh, so why don't I go ahead and uh, run code when I uh, when the on trigger enter is called. So what I will say is walkthrough wall script dot set layer to not solid. So you see the method that I wrote here. It is now accessible to us. We can access it and uh, run it. All right, so let me just do that. Dot set layer to not solid. And you need to put the brackets. Remember that. 
whenever you call a method and I'll make my life easy. I'll just copy that. I'll comment this out. And this time it's set layer to default. And I'm just going to uh, disable uh, the on trigger stay method. And that is pretty much it. So if I go back to Unity and I hit play, I'll watch there. The layer of the wall is currently default. I walk into the cube, it's not solid. I walk out, it becomes default. I walk in, it's not solid. I walk out, it's default. All right, so it's working just fine. Okay, now, of course, this was a very contrived example. And let's say, for example, you had many walls. Let's say there were like a hundred walls and you wanted all of them to change layer when you walked into the trigger. Are you going to then find all of these walls and uh, access uh, the a walkthrough wall component and run the function? Would you do it that way? No, you wouldn't do it that way. That's uh, that is that would be very hard and inefficient. I'll show you later in this chapter one how to use events. So you would use a single event, all the walls, their scripts will be subscribing to the event. You just walk into the trigger, call the event, and they'll all respond uh, to that event. I'll show you that later. But in the next video, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll show you how to change uh, the color of the material that's on the wall. Uh, using the trigger. So instead of just changing the layer, I'll also change the color and transparency. And I'll just show you a little bit about materials in the next video. All right. So just to go over, just to recap what was done, uh, I edited both of the scripts, the wall walkthrough wall script. I added two new public methods, uh, which can be accessed. And they simply did the what was done previously. Uh, simply one sets the layer to not solid and the other method sets it to default. I then in the trigger example script set a hard reference uh, to the walkthrough wall script uh, by finding the first of all finding the game object called wall then getting that component and just storing a reference to it. Then in on trigger enter, I uh, set the layer to not solid uh, by calling that method and in exit, I did set it to default by calling that method. So it was really simple. But as I mentioned, it's really not uh, suitable for if something like if you've got lots of walls, then it's not suitable to do uh, accessing that way and setting stuff that way. And you should use a different system like events to do that. But anyway, that's all for later. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.